Today we will perform a coupled thermal stress analysis using hypermesh and optistrap. This type of analysis is crucial in the design of mechanical components which operate at high temperatures. Thermal expansion and the stresses that are developed due to this are critical in the design of mechanical systems and can cause disastrous failure of the system if not addressed properly. We will evaluate the stresses developed in an IC engine block when it is subjected to thermal loading conditions. The grid temperatures and the stresses that are developed due to thermal expansion will be visualized during post-processing. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall process. The first step is to create material and property for the engine block. Along with structural parameters, we also need to define the thermal properties of the material as we are doing a coupled analysis. Using the user profile icon, make sure that the user profile is set to OptiStruct. Now we will import the CAD model file as geometry. Select the file using the import options. With all settings as default, import the geometry. The geometry consists of one solid part. Now create material. Provide a name to this material. For this analysis, we will use the SI unit system. Let's enter the default mechanical properties, namely Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio and density. A is the thermal coefficient of material. As we are performing a thermal stress analysis, check the box next to MAT4 to specify thermal properties. Thermal conductivity value is 73 Watt per meter degree Celsius. Enter specific heat value as 440.5. Lastly, enter value of convective coefficient as 20. Now create property. Provide a name to this property. Let's change the card image to P solid as we are using solid components. Assign the steel material in proper selection box. Now we will assign this property to the engine block component. The material gets assigned automatically. Now we can start creating the thermal boundary conditions. We will specify an ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. Thermal loading will be applied on the internal wall of the engine block. A convection interface will be created on the outer faces of the engine block to establish a link between the component and the ambient surrounding temperature. Let's take a look at how this is done. Open the nodes tab from geometry panel. Click on as node and create a temporary node at origin location. The temporary node is now visible in the graphics area. Open the Numbers tab from Tools panel. Now select the origin node and switch on the ID display. Let's mesh the component using 3-dimensional tetra elements. Set the radio button to volume tetra. Now select the solid component. Change the 2D type to R triads. We will check the boxes next to curvature and proximity to capture all geometric features accurately. Enter element size as 8 and minimum element size as 1. Create the mesh. Open the delete panel by pressing F2. Using the entity selection drop down, switch the selection box to solids. Let's select all the solids in the model. We will also delete the bounding surfaces. Delete the solids. Now we will scale the mesh to convert the dimension units 
from millimeter to meter. Set the entity selection box to elements. Select all the elements in the model. We will select the temporary node as origin. Using the uniform button, enter scale value as 1000. Scale down all the elements. Create a new load collector and provide a name to it. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Select the temporary node and uncheck all the degrees of freedom. Click on create edit. We will enter the ambient temperature value as 30 degrees Celsius. Create a new load collector to store temperature loads. We will use the constraints tab to create these loads. Switch selection box to faces and select the internal cylindrical wall of the engine block. We will apply a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius on this surface. To combine the ambient and temperature loads, create a new load collector. Change the card image to SPC add. Now enter num value as 2. Open the tabular data entry. Select the ambient and temperature load collectors in the two fields. Close the tabular data. Create a new group to specify convection interface. Change the card image to convection. In the element selection box, switch to add solid faces. Now select all the faces. We will deselect the unwanted faces where convection boundary condition is not required. These include the top face, bolt hole surfaces and also the internal cylindrical face. Let's also deselect the lower face of the engine block. Add the remaining faces to the convection group. Set F type to 3 and enter convective coefficient value as 20. Let's enable the collector's toolbar to access card edit options for convection interface. Click on card edit button. Set the entity selection box to elements. Select config type as slave 3 to include all CHBDYE elements which are included in the convection group. Using the by group selection criteria, select all the elements from convection group. Now we will link the ambient temperature node to these elements. Check the box next to convection quant. Select the origin node in TA1 field. Click return once the changes are done. To perform the thermal analysis, create a new load step. Change the analysis type to heat transfer steady state. Select the SPC add load collector in SPC field. Keep all other options as default. Let's create a new load collector to store single point constraints for structural analysis.
In the constraints tab, select all the cylindrical faces on the bolting locations. Now check the boxes next to all degrees of freedom and create the constraints. Create a new load step and provide a name to it. Let's set the analysis type as linear static. Now select the structural SPC load collector in proper selection box. Check the box next to temp load. Switch the selection option to subcase ID and select the thermal load step in selection box. To output the required results, press Ctrl F and add the global output requests card to the analysis setup. Check the box next to displacement and set format as H3D. Let's do the same for flux results. We will also output the thermal results in H3D format. Do the same for stress results. The thermal stress analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. The analysis run is complete. Select the H3D file from working directory. Apply the results. Open the contours tab. Let's view the elemental flux results with averaging method as simple. We can clearly view the thermal flux contours on the engine block. Let's view the grid temperature due to thermal loading. We can change the numeric format of the legend as required. The temperature pattern generated due to heat conduction and convection to the surrounding can be visualized. Let's split the graphics area into two parts to view the structural stress results simultaneously. Using the load results option, select the same H3D file and apply the results. We will synchronize the two windows for better visualization. In the second window, change the subcase to structural and view the stress results. Using the contours tab, apply the displacement results. The deformation of the component due to thermal expansion can be seen clearly. As the deformation values are very low, let's switch to different numeric format for the legend. Now change the result type to stress and set averaging method to simple. Apply the results. These result values are in Pascal. As megapascal is more commonly used unit for engineering stress results, let's convert the results. We will set the multiplier value to 1e-6 to get the stress values in megapascal. We have successfully performed a thermal stress analysis and extracted stress results due to thermal expansion of the component. And this is how we can perform a coupled thermal stress analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot.
Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.